Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer, many thanks, because they invited me for this special event. And uh, for the long life, you have several events that you memorize. And I remember our first informal meeting with Boris and Yakov Zalmanovich. And it happens in, on, in one hotel. And we have just one room for three of us. <laughs> and we have a, a huge bed which occupied the space of all room. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first time I was in bed with academician. <laughs> 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 well, it's, it's, there are so many nice memories about such events and I'm very happy to be here and happy birthday to Boris. And now let me present my talk. Fortunately, and Professor Rutkin already introduced a little bit of delay. He mentioned that some delay may help something in slide mode control. I would like to talk just ex ex exactly about time delay systems. Let me uh, first, okay. Ah, outline. Uh, first, I would like to present some notations and some, some preliminary results. And then I try to explain what does it mean lyapunov krasovsky approach. And then I introduce concept of Lyapunov matrices with some basic properties and give a new definition of Lyapunov matrices. And finally, I come to the complete type functionals. This is an outline of my talk. I would talk about very simple time delay system, this one, where we have uh, uh -huh, where we have just one delay, H, we have constant matrices A0 and A1, and we would like to study this system. Uh, for time delay system, initial value problem is stated a little bit different as we usually assume and for the case of delay-free system. Here we need a, an initial function. Since our system is time invariant, it's uh, usual... Oh, sorry. Ay, 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 ay. Uh -huh. It's usual to assume that... The sh it's usual to assume that initial time instant is equal to zero. We will assume this initial time instant. And we need a concept of initial function, phi, which is defined on the segment minus h and zero and transforms the segment into Rn. And the uh, initial value problem is stated as follows. We would like to find the solution of our system that satisfies this condition. The initial condition for x should coincide with the initial function phi for all theta between minus h and zero. Uh, we usually assume that the initial function belong to the space of piecewise continuous functions. So we assume that function phi, which is here, is piecewise continuous. This is a definition of the initial value problem. Uh, I would like to use the Euclidean norm for vectors and the corresponding induced spectral norm for matrices. Uh, and for initial function, I will use the uniform norm, which I supply with some sub-indice H, which help us to differentiate this norm from the normal norm of, of vectors, okay? A very interesting concept for time delay system is a state. What is the state of a dynamical system? Normally, we understand that if we have a system x dot is equal to f of x, then we know that state is x of t. If we have a system x2 dot is equal to f of x, x dot, then we know that the state is x of t and x dot of t. And so, for different dynamical system, we have different concept of the state. And for time delay system, system one, the state is defined as a segment of the trajectory. It's x sub t. 
x sub t is not as, as x of t. x sub t is a function that is defined for theta between minus h and 0. And this is a concept of the state. Okay? Uh, for system 1, we can define the fundamental matrix. This fundamental matrix plays the same role as matrix exponent plays for delay-free system. So we call this matrix K of T is fundamental matrix of system 1. If the matrix satisfies the same delay equation as the original system with the same matrices, with the same delay, and uh, it has a very specific initial condition, K of T is equal to the zero matrix for negative T, and k of 0 is equal to the identity matrix. Okay? This is a fundamental matrix, and fundamental matrix usually used in order to express a solution of our system, a solution of uh, initial value problem. So if you have uh, an initial function phi, then we can compute the solution that corresponds to this initial function using the fundamental matrix. It is hit sitting here. So if we know fundamental matrix, then you immediately can compute all solutions of our system for different initial functions. This is a known as a Cauchy formula. And this is a classical definition of what, what does it mean exponential stability for system one. As usual, we have a constant gamma. Sorry. We usually have a constant gamma that is greater than or equal to one. And we have a positive sigma such that for any solution of the system we have such exponential upper bound. The only knowledge, the only new is here we have an initial function, the norm of initial function with index h. Okay. And now Krasovsky theorem. Krasovsky theorem, this is a let's say me. Let me say that this is a very simplified version of the classical Krasovsky theorem. This is a, just a, a version which is adapted to the linear systems. That's all. Okay? Because Krasovsky theorem is quite general for nonlinear system. And this is a very simplified version of the Krasovsky theorem. So we have here in this theorem two conditions. First, we need a functional V such that it admits a low bound of this form with constant alpha, positive constant alpha 1, and it admits upper bound of similar form, but here you see phi of 0, the point-wise value of initial function, and here we have a norm of function in the space of, in the space of piecewise continuous functions. So, these two little bit different, but of the same form. And the second condition of the Krasovsky theorem tells us that if you substitute in our functional a solution x of t of our system, then time derivative of the function, which depends now on t, should be less than or equal to minus beta times the norm of x of t square. These are two conditions. So, according to this theorem, there are two different schemes how we can apply this theorem for stability analysis. First scheme is based, is something like this. We just select functionals ourselves that satisfy the first condition of the Krasovsky theorem. And then we compute the time derivative and verify if this functional satisfies also the second condition of the Krasovsky theorem. Let me illustrate this with this simple functional. Assume that we have a functional of this form with two terms where P0, P and Q are positive definite matrices. It's this functional certainly satisfies the first condition of the Krasovsky theorem because we can select alpha 1 as a minimal eigen eigenvalue of matrix P and alpha 2 can be taken as this value which is also positive. And then if you substitute in this functional a solution x of t of system 1, then we obtain this expression for the value of our functional along the solution. 
the time derivative can be computed easily and the time derivative can be presented in the form of in, as a quadratic form of x of t and x of t minus h with this specific matrix sitting here this matrix includes matrix matrices p and q from the functional and matrices a0 and a1 from the system and then in order to satisfy the second condition of the krasovsky theorem we only need to ask that this matrix should be negative definite this is how the great deal of uh, lmi type stability conditions for time delay system was obtained and reported in the literature so this is a just a direct way to obtain conditions for stability of time delay systems but if we look for the system without delays if you look at the system x dot is equal to a times x and then we know that this system is also exponentially stable if and only if there exists a Lyapunov function v of x that satisfies this condition and this condition more or less the same as we had in the Krasovsky theorem and the second condition means that the time derivative of the function along any solution of our system should satisfy this inequality so this is as, as the same but if I ask you for delay free system do you select function function v yourself or you try to find the function that satisfies to this system usually we do in opposite way usually we select not a function v but we select the time derivative w of x and then we compute a function v of x using matrix Lyapunov matrix V which is a solution of the Lyapunov matrix equation so we do in a different way so what I am going to present is how we can extend this approach to the case of delay systems so now the statement of the problem let us assume that we have a, that we have a quadratic form W and we would like to find a functional v sub zero of phi such that the derivative of the functional along the solution of the, our system coincide with the quadratic form so we look not at the first condition of the Krasovsky theorem but on the second one we select time derivative and then we would like to reconstruct the functional okay uh, if system one is exponentially stable then the functional v sub zero can be presented in this integral form where x of t phi is a solution of our system with the initial function phi so now we have this expression now if we substitute here instead of x of t phi the expression that we have by Cauchy formula then we can obtain after some very simple transformation then we can obtain the functional the functional v sub zero five include three terms the first one the second and the third and all three terms depends on just one matrix u this matrix u are sitting in each one of these three terms this is exactly as we have for delay free system where the function v depends function v depends on the solution of Lyapunov matrix equation and here matrix u is a matrix that can be defined as this improper integral where k is fundamental matrix and w is a given is a matrix of the quadratic form w and we say that this matrix is a Lyapunov matrix associated with matrix w with this matrix we can compute immediately the functional v sub zero because the functional is defined by the matrix and now we have uh, such table where we put first delay free case for delay free case we have for Lyapunov matrix if system is exponentially stable 
a similar integral representation. But we know also that the same matrix V is a solution of Lyapunov matrix equation. Okay? For time delay case, we define a Lyapunov matrix in this form. So, but we don't know what uh, equation defines this matrix. What is the substitute of the Lyapunov matrix equation for delay, time delay case? This is the question which we will discuss now. Uh, the Lyapunov matrix that is defined by formula 3 here, this, this matrix satisfies several, several basic properties. The first one is called dynamic property. It means that Lyapunov matrix U is a solution of this differential equation with delay, with the same matrices and with the same delay. Okay, this is the first condition. The second condition is called the symmetry condition, the symmetry property. It means that for negative tau, u of minus tau is defined as u transpose of tau. This means that initial function for this solution repeats the solution itself. This is a very specific initial condition. And finally, we have a property that connects Lyapunov matrix u with matrix W. This is the relation between these matrices. And this is the algebraic property. So for the Lyapunov matrix U, which is defined as an integral, we have these three basic properties, dynamic, symmetry, and algebraic. OK? Uh, you see, the, the symmetry property show us that something happens at the origin. For tau equal to zero, it should be some, uh, some discontinuity of the first derivative. <coughs> and uh, actually, the algebraic property can be written in a different form, which means that the W defines the, the size of the discontinuity at the origin where sorry where u prime of plus zero and u prime of minus zero stands for the right hand side and the left hand side derivative of matrix u at tau equal to zero this is a jump of the first derivative at zero okay well, uh, if you look at the definition of, at the original definition of Lyapunov matrix as an proper integral, then we know that such definition is also valid only for systems which are exponentially stable. And uh, the second problem with this definition of Lyapunov matrix is that such matrices such expression for Lyapunov matrix does not help us to compute the Lyapunov matrix. It's completely impossible to compute such integrals because we have previously computed the fundamental matrix for all, tau between, for all t between zero and infinity. And then we have to evaluate integrals for different tau. It's completely impossible. So we need something that can be used in order to compute Lyapunov matrices. So, in this case, first we would like to give a new definition of Lyapunov matrices. We define the matrix U as a Lyapunov matrix if it satisfies these three properties, these three basic properties. Any solution of these three properties is a Lyapunov matrix. But now, uh, we have a problem because we have, for Lyapunov matrix, we have two different definitions. First, as an improper integral, and the second is this new definition. Then we have to compare if these two definitions define the same matrix or not. And the theorem tells us that if system is exponentially stable, then matrix 3 is a unique solution of equation 4 that satisfies property 5 and 6. So this matrix U is a unique solution 
of these three of these three conditions this one this one and the last one but this is only for the case of exponentially stable systems okay but it helps quite a little for the computation of the Lyapunov matrices because in order to compute a solution of time delay equation we need to know solution but symmetry property tell us that the initial condition should coincide with the solution so it's completely impossible to find the solution just looking at the uh, new definition so we need to find another way to compute Lyapunov matrix in this case we can define two auxiliary matrices y of tau and z of tau which depends on the Lyapunov matrix and then for these two matrices we have such lemma that states that these matrices u this matrix is y of tau and z of tau are solution of system 7 and if you look at system 7 this is a system of two linear differential equation without any delay we have no delay here at all this is a normal system classical system of linear differential equations and additionally these two matrices satisfy this boundary value conditions the first one the first condition is just from the definition if you look at the sorry if you look at the definition of these matrices then you see that matrix u of zero is equal to matrix z of at, at h so this is the first boundary condition and the second boundary condition is just uh, the algebraic condition written in terms of these auxiliary matrices, nothing else. Okay? And what is much more important for us is that if we know a, a solution of the boundary value problem 7, 8, so if we know matrices Y and Z, then we can compute the Lyapunov matrix U using this simple expression so now the problem of computation is reduced to the computation of solution of boundary value problem for linear system without time delay this is the classical stuff that we find in many textbooks how to solve this and uh, if the boundary value problem admits a unique solution then Matrix, Lyapunov matrix is coincide with matrix Y of tau. So this is a simple case. And then we would like to talk about when such system of equations that defines Lyapunov matrix admit a unique solution. First of all, we define the spectrum of our original system one. This is a set of eig eigenvalue of system one is defined here. And we say that the system satisfies the Lyapunov condition if it does not contain a point S sub zero such that minus S sub zero also belongs to the spectrum of the system. If you remember from the classical Lyapunov theory, the Lyapunov matrix equation admits a unique solution if and only if the matrix A satisfies this condition. It doesn't contain agent value s sub zero such that minus s sub zero also is an agent value of this system okay and i can say that we have such a theorem that system one admits a unique Lyapunov matrix associated with a given symmetric matrix w if and only if the system satisfies the Lyapunov condition this is exactly the same statement as we know for the classical Lyapunov matrix equation. This is exactly the same. Uh, now we would like to talk a little bit about functionals. First, we can define a fun uh, We select W as a quadratic form. Now we would like to make a little bit more substantial derivative and we defined a functional w of phi as a function which includes three terms this is a quadratic state of the quadratic form of the present state quadratic form of the past state 
and this uh, distributed quadratic form. So if you have such W phi, and if uh, for system one there exists a Lyapunov matrix associated with matrix W0, W1 plus H, W2, then we can compute a functional V sub zero, which is defined with this matrix, and uh, uh, we can compute the time derivative of this functional V of phi, which is y of V0 of phi plus this integral term, and the time derivative of this functional along the solution of the system coincides with mi minus W of x sub t. So we know how to compute we know how to compute functionals which have time derivative along the solution of quite complicated, quite general form. Okay? And we say that system one, we say that uh, functional, this new functional is of the complete type if all matrices W sub J from J from 0 up to, uh, up to 2 are positive definite. And in this case, the system one is exp if system 1 is exponentially stable, then for any given positive definite matrices W sub J, there exists alpha 1 such that the complete type functional admits the low bound exactly the same as it is stated in the, lab in the Krasovsky theorem. And uh, for this functional, we also can find another upper bound which also coincides with the upper bound from the Krasovsky theorem. In this sense, we can state the Krasovsky theorem gives us not only sufficient condition for exponential stability, but also the necessary condition of exponential stability, which is stated in theorem 8.2. So we say that system one is exponentially stable now if and only if there exists a functional that satisfies these two Krasovsky conditions. Okay, this is the literature, which includes several slides of papers dedicated to this topic. So, thank you very much. Uh, the question is, do we study system with several delays or system of neutral type time delay systems, right? Well, we have similar results for system with several delays. We have the similar result for system with distributed delays. We have similar result for neutral type system with pointwise delays. We have similar result for neutral type system with distributed delays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Look, there are, there are different approaches to study time delay systems. There are a group of specialists from infinite dimensional systems. And if you ask them, how does Lyapunov equation looks for time delay systems? They say, okay, it looks like A transpose time X plus X time A equal to minus W. Where A is an operator, X is an operator, W is an operator. How to solve this? Now we see that the problem is much more simpler than in the, this general approach. Yeah? Okay. More questions? Uh, do you consider uh, uh, switching the system? In this case, in which form uh, 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 I would like to construct uh, the regular function? Uh, mm, no. 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 That's you, 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 see, you see, my philosophy is like that. For example, if you look at the case of delay-free system, look at the case of delay-free system, and you consider the system with time-varying matrix A, A of T. Then if you would like, then you, the theory tells us that we have a differential Lyapunov matrix equation. But the problem is, if the system, original system, is exponentially stable, 
then this Lyapunov matrix equation is exponentially unstable. Mm. I see, it's exponentially unstable. So if you don't know exactly the value, the precise value of the initial condition, you always have a, an error which grows exponentially with time. So it's theory looks quite nice, but it is not applicable at all. Thank <laughs> you.